So it is not a good day to be a SoFi investor as the stock is down almost around 10% as of the time of recording this video. So if we actually take a look over at the stock right now, you can see it's actually down, well actually it's recovered a little bit, but at one point it was actually down over 13%. We're seeing some recovery here, but still it is a bad day. Now this is because SoFi received some terrible news, okay? And this is the fact that Joe Biden and his government actually decided to extend the student loan payment pause all the way to August 31st. So SoFi's private student loan business, which is our highest revenue driver, won't actually be growing that quickly because, well, why would students want to look for other options if right now they don't have to pay any interest at all on their payments? So the 41 million Americans that this affects don't actually have to, you know, worry about their payments right now. They can just sort of continue to try to accumulate savings so whenever they do turn this back on, they can actually start to pay this off. And we can actually take a look at the actual statement here on the whitehouse.gov website where they talk about extending the payments and that this is going to be the last extension that they make. Although the May 1st one was also the last extension and the January 1st one before that was supposed to be the last extension as well, so we don't have any clue. Anthony Noto, the CEO of SoFi, have given up on the full idea that this student loan you know, payment moratorium is going to end in 2022 at all. So I'm going to show you some future guidances for which they changed to sort of outline how they expect to earn money now that, you know, we're not going to see any student loan revenue coming in for the rest of 2022. Well, that's not exactly true. We're still going to see student loans and there still might be some additional add-ons for people that want to get ahead of it and pay their bill, but it's not going to be nearly as fast as what we originally expected. Okay, now that we got our SoFi Blue, let's read a press conference here. So SoFi updates 2022 to annual guidance to and I don't actually like the way they say this, reflect latest extension of federal student loan payment moratorium. Now, this isn't exactly true, and I'll show you why. It says, today announced updated guidance for an anticipated full year 2022 financial results following President Biden's directive to extend the federal student loan payment moratorium from May 1st, 2022 until August 31st of 2022. Makes sense, right? But then they also say, accordingly, management updated 2022 guidance assumes that student loan moratorium moratorium will not be in fact ending during the course of 2022. So they're completely cutting out all the growth for the rest of the year, even though it says it's going to come back August 31st. That's a huge difference. They're saying that they're cutting out September 1st all the way to January 1st. That's a full quarter of growth, but yet they're just saying that they're extending it all the way to whatever Biden says. So that puts into people's minds that, oh, well, this could get extended again. And what Anthony Noto and their team are saying is, no, even if it does get extended again, we're still guiding for that. So if they don't, and it ends August 31st, okay, then this is actually going to be more positive for us than what our originally what we're going to talk about is being expected. But regardless, just, just jump in and look at the numbers that they're actually posting here. So it says, SoFi updated adjusted net revenue and adjusted EBITDA gui guidances for full year of 2022 is now $1.47 billion for their net revenue and then $100 million for their EBITDA. This is a reduction from previous guidances of $1.57 billion in net revenue and then $180 million of EBITDA respectively. That is super interesting and telling of the business of SoFi and I would like for Anthony Noto or Chris LaPointe or someone like this to actually break down these numbers for me because what I'm seeing is only a hundred million dollar loss on terms of net revenue, but $80 million of that is going to be actual earnings like profits, not straight profits. It's still EBITDA. So it's after all the crap, but still that is a huge margin. One that I was not expecting for student loans. And then just to clarify here, just so then you don't actually read this and think anything else. It says SoFi remains its original guidance in terms of Q1 of 2022. Well, no duh, because the student loan mor moratorium was ending in May 1st. So this doesn't change anything. So don't even read into that. And then there's just these last two statements from Anthony Noto that I want to read out to you guys, because I do think that they add some context to what's going on. So uh, just right here on the first one, it says, SoFi remains incredibly well positioned to drive continued growth in revenue, members, and products, along with continued and improved profitability despite the fact that our student loan refinancing business has operated at less than 50% of pre-COVID levels for the last two years. SoFi has definitely been a net gainer whenever it comes to the companies that have actually benefited off of COVID-19, 
but this has been a serious blow to their business and it just shows you how they're able to actually transition themselves into new businesses to try to, you know, capitalize on the new trends instead of going after the same old business of them just being a student loan, you know, repayment company. And then you see the companies that are doing that, like Lending Club, maybe positionally, like actually get destroyed because they're not seeing the same gains and they're not being able to transition over into other business models. So that is a huge benefit here, but regardless, let's just read on in the next statement of what Anthony Noto has to say. So uh, just starting here, even with the assumption of no end to the moratorium in 2022, our new full year 2022 financial guidance represents approximately 45% year over year adjusted net revenue growth to 1.47 billion, a tripling of adjusted EBITDA to 100 million and a doubling of margins. That is so incredible, especially whenever you look at the stock only being a six times price to sales ratio, which is how much, you know, the stock price is actually going versus the amount of revenue that they're bringing in. And you do not see any of that growth whenever you look at it at being only around six to seven times versus the amount of growth that they're seeing in the spite of all the, you know, hard challenges that they're facing. But let's continue. SoFi has done an outstanding job achieving record financial results, members and product growth and consistent profitability, despite the negative impact of the extended student loan payment moratorium. We will work diligently to continue that trend in 2022. Now, this really could prove to show that SoFi stock might take a longer period of time for the stock to actually pop off. Every analyst that you read about this company always says the same thing. They have proved an amazing market. Their growth is incredible. Everything along these lines, but yet they continue to drop their price targets because what these analysts are doing, they have still high beliefs in SoFi, but they're only allowed to show what the price of the stock will be in the next 12 months, okay? So there could be a huge long-term perspective whenever it comes to SoFi, but in the short term, we are going to see some painful months here because obviously we're seeing some lowered guidances and that always hurts the stock. I wanted to touch on another topic, and that's the fact of my last video, what SoFi isn't telling you, check it out up here if you'd like. But I got a lot of comments saying that I was spreading FUD or the information that I was sharing was, you know, misinformation or something along these lines. The truth is, is it wasn't misinformation at all, okay? I share everything good and bad about the companies that I want to talk about. Regardless of any confirmation bias or any other YouTubers that you might follow that might tell you that this student loan extension was good news for SoFi. It wasn't, it was bad news, but that's okay. Okay, I love SoFi, I haven't sold a share of it, okay? But I do also want to take in all the data that I can find about the companies that I love, regardless of whether it's good or bad, because it's my money at the end of the day. With that being said, I actually found this great channel here, uh, or actually Twitter account called Cha Cha uh, Ukraine Bank <laughs> Battery Energy South Korea America Football Basketball Sushi. And he actually had some great things to say. Some good data that they found off of Sensor Tower, which is a lot like App Annie. They're able to see the amount of downloads and analytics and try to predict how much downloads happened on a certain app. That being said, he shared this chart right here, which I'll try to break down. It's a little blurry, but whatever. So you can see so SoFi iOS downloads here. They grade it as well as SoFi Android downloads, and then they add them all up, okay? So as you can see that the amount of downloads actually starts to drop as of Q1 of 2022, it's definitely not as high as Q4. Now they also show Weeble, a very similar trend happening as well as Robinhood. So it's not just a SoFi thing, it seems to be a finance category in general. And so what ChaCha did here is he actually took the Q4 2021 numbers that Sensor Tower did as well as SoFi. These are both posted numbers, okay? From 650,000 to 523,000. And so Sensor Tower was actually uh, you know, a lot higher. And so SoFi's real numbers were only 80% of that, 80.4%. So uh, it's actually cut off here. You can kind of see it, but I'll just tell you here in Q1 of 2022 downloads, it was 380,000 for Sensor Tower. So taking that same percent of 80% is what SoFi is going to do is around 304,000 new added members for Q1 of 2022. And that's exactly what he says here in this quarter. He says, using the same estimate of 80%, we are looking at 304,000 numbers numbers total, so about 3.76 million users is my estimate. My estimate was 3.73 million almost identical to what this guy had to say. And yet I got so much FUD saying, oh, you know, he spoke incorrectly or there was some sort of FUD or something along these lines. This is exact data from the app downloads that Sensor Tower had to show, okay? Using the exact same math, I think it's a very well-educated guess. So if you wanna turn a blind eye to this and say that I'm spreading FUD, go ahead, you know, leave your nasty comments down below, but I'm just trying to share the most valuable information for SoFi for you guys, so then you guys can make some informed decisions or just look 
at it as entertainment, you know? But regardless, the lower the price goes, I'm gonna continue to buy the company as long as they don't dilute shareholders, okay? The more that they continue to drop in terms of share price, the higher I'm gonna be able to get my share count up and I'm gonna be holding for the long term. In fact, I plan on retiring off this stock by 2030 and if you wanna see that math, you can check out the video right there. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys like the video and subscribe down below if you wanna see more financial content just like this.